Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. So, check it out. I got, whoa, no, don't check that out as I knock the camera around. Check out the fact that I've got my Chronicle X stretch goal models from Archon Games. Uh, I was waiting for these guys. Actually, I'd have the game sitting there, and I'm one of those people that's kind of weird about wanting to really try out a game until I have all the components. I mean, it's one thing if I get, like, the full game and then like all the expansion stuff but to me a lot of this seemed like it just needed to be in there especially for the unit selection choice for chronicle x so you know there's a lot of interesting alien designs and we've got our fat little robot here we've got like our jet bike with the grays on it and just all kinds of big monsters interesting to note this is box one now i do have box two and i don't know if i need them both at the same time you want to see what's inside i bet you do Plastic! Dang, that's heavy too. Big honking sprues of plastic. So I'm curious. I'm curious if I need to actually dig into box two in order to build all this stuff. This looks like the robot. You can see it's treads right here. It's at least a 50, if not 60 millimeter base. I don't know if it has something it's supposed to go on top of. To me, the most interesting aspect of this is not just the fact that it gives you a lot more variety in terms of units to play around with with Chronicle X, but I'm really curious to see what's coming down the pipeline when it comes to Archon's inevitable war game they've been working on. They did have some more of their Naga Snake Man models included. If you want to check out a video of those, I have one in the Rampart video that we did a while back, which I have yet to paint. Don't remind me. But I gotta give Archon credit where credit's due. I mean, the level of detail, they continue to impress me with the quality of their plastics. They're really stepping it up each and every time. I mean, I know they just finished up the Dungeons & Lasers Kickstarter campaign. I mean, that... I couldn't even resist. I really, truly couldn't. I'm like, I don't have a use for the terrain, but geez, all those plastic figures in there, I could not resist. I ended up just getting a, a core fantasy set. As tempting as the sewers were, I don't know when I'd actually get to use them. So if you see all this and start to panic, uh, do not fear, because in the gigantic stretch goals box, we do have printed instructions, and I would hope that most of those probably end up online as well. So... Something to find reassuring. However, my fear is that like most plastic kit instructions, there's going to be some oddly numbered parts or part order of, you know, building that could result in interesting things happening, but you never know. So, I mean, overall, quality seems quite nice. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be doing some cleaning. It does look pretty thick around some of those parts, but that's not something that, you know, a sharp knife can't cure. So... Give me a sec. We'll put at least these guys together. We'll see if I need to crack open that second box or if that's just surpo uh, superfluous. If it's extra stuff, we're not going to get fancy here, okay? Sit tight. We'll see how things turn out here. All right. So we spent a lot more time than I thought it would take. And we got all these monstrosities put together. And before I display the final product, uh, I wanted to point out a couple of interesting things. So, first off, here is an example of one of the actual characters. I didn't clean it or anything. These are the unicast process that Archon uses, where it's basically a single cast piece in resin. So that's why there's a little bit of cleanup still on him. And he's totally based on the dude from Alien vs. Predator by Capcom which is really cool, and I'm pretty sure she sort of kind of is as well, if I remember my arcade games correctly. I'm going to clean this one. I really dig this model's look anyway. So those are the actual human models, and in case you're curious about the scale, a warrior of the future, and a guard-sized model, and an embiggened one as well. So you can see the proportions on these are a little bit more true scale, but I don't think it's going to matter so much with the bosses. Let me show you what we're what we're dealing with here. So first off, here is the Diwali Ridge Beast. And you can see he's a big boy. He kind of reminds me of a Rancor. 
and that's probably intentional, but he obviously isn't, and he's got a jetpack equipped on his body. You'll notice there's a bit of some gaps in there. I'm not a big fan of that, but I figure it's not that hard to fix up. All right, besides our Ridge Beast, move it on. We've got the Annihilator. You can see he's kind of crossing his arms and hanging out in this mech suit. A lot of cleanup was necessary, and obviously I did not hit every spot yet. And it's interesting because I've built more recent kits that Protoss, not Protoss, Archon have developed. And I gotta say, the quality and the size of the pieces and the layouts of the sprues have continued to get better. These are big. Let's see, we have the Gremulus, which is this jet bike thingy. I wasn't 100% sure where those claws on it are supposed to go. I went ahead and just glued it down to the base. I'm assuming, I haven't tried yet because I haven't pulled it out, but there is a foam tray in the stretch goals box and not the box that these came in, obviously. In fact, there was two. I don't even remember now if at the beginning of the video I had actually had both boxes, I know I had one, there's actually two, and that's where all the sprues were, they were not in one box. But anyway, in the actual stretch goal box there is a foam tray with cutouts for all these guys. Here is the only one that I haven't glued all the way onto the base yet, the Slipstream Sentry. And again, I don't think it'd be possible to get underneath if I didn't. And yes, there's big old gaps there. Deal with it. It's a board game model. It's kind of cool though. Oh, what is this guy called? This is... I wrote these down, otherwise I would never remember. The Romeri? I think this thing had kind of a violator type look to it. Like spawn style at the very beginning, but now it's much more of its own thing, which I actually appreciate. I think it's for the better. Painting it's going to be a challenge, to say the least. Kind of tagging along with him is the. Oh, what is this thing called? The Karoth River Fiend which looks like a centipede-like critter. That face screams critter body, not so much. It's crawling over the sewer pipe there. And my personal favorite, this is the Overmind. And this is like the final boss, if I'm remembering correctly. And funny enough, I thought this big, long, whip-like hairpiece thing. It was going to be a pain. Nope, everything actually slotted in, connected to the base perfect. There's another one right here, smaller one. It touches the arm, and this kind of touches it as well. Everything had nice, easy contact points. I was pretty surprised. The only one that didn't, the only guy that really gave me much hassle was the Annihilator. Getting his legs, there were no real set spots for the legs to attach to the body. The joints in here, that little hip joint, no real specific spot that it's supposed to sit at. So I ended up actually gluing the legs to the base and then before everything dried, kind of squished it all together. So, a nice selection of figures. As far as I know, they're only going to be available in the board game. Uh, so I'd say considering the wait time, that it took for these models to get to everybody, you might be able to get them for a pretty decent price if you go look around online. Uh, I know hitting up places like eBay or Board Game Geek, you might get a good deal. So if you want big, giant, plastic monstrosities to add to your various tabletop games, obviously with stuff like Starfinder and Stargrave, Planet 28, uh, there's plenty of new and interesting sci-fi games where you probably could find a use for these creatures. And, you know, worst case scenario, I'm sure you can come up with some kind of rule set to use these in 40k. I mean, it's easy enough. Maybe there's some kind of, you know, Talos or 
some kind of weird dark Eldar Drukari. Sorry, let me get it right. But fun set of kits. Uh, I since I finally have everything, I'm going to get a chance to finally try the game. I'm really weird about wanting to play things that don't have all their parts present yet, but that's just me. So, nice spread of models, and that's not even including all the other stuff that was just in the Unicast. This is just all of the nice, big, hard plastic figures. And I gotta say, impressed with the results, and considering where Archon have taken things since, it definitely bodes well for the future. I'm personally looking forward to seeing what happens with their Wolfenstein molds. I think that's going to be some fun stuff to put together as well. So hopefully we'll get to see those on this channel as well. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.